Okay, so there are three stories about Esther McVeigh that I want to get to today. Uh, the first one uh, was something that was reported by the BBC, and the BBC actually did a fairly good job reporting this. Credit where credit's due, I don't often praise the BBC, but for this they did a very good job. Uh, and it was essentially saying that the universal credit system is making life harder for abuse victims. Now, going into it, and something I didn't realise before I actually read this article, was uh, the universal credit system is paid to one member per household. Now, I know from past experience, uh, I've been unemployed, but my partner has been working. I've not been entitled to anything, but I have been required to sign on every week. Completely redundant. Why should I sign on if I'm not actually entitled to anything? But that's how the system is. The universal credit system is only one payment per household. So... Uh, during this article, they, they reached out to uh, domestic abuse victims who had managed to get away, incredibly brave people willing to speak. And they said that it's, it's an incredibly difficult position to be in. It takes a lot for uh, a domestic abuse victim to actually leave the abuser. It's made all the more complicated when there's a child involved and knowing that it could take 12 weeks for the DWP to actually provide any kind of financial backup is all the more devastating. The fact that the person who has been abusing you for however long has all the power and knowing that even if you do manage to leave them, you are still in a world of trouble because 12 weeks is an incredibly long time to go without any income at all. Now, the Job Centre uh, have responded saying that they have people on hand to help with this. Anyone who has signed on, anyone who's gone to the Job Centre for anything will know that there is so much administrative, administrative BS surrounding everything in the job centre, everything in DWP, that everything is drawn out seemingly for as long as it can be. A simple process is made ridiculously complicated. And if there is a fault, the job centre will never admit it. And certainly they will never amend it. And when I say amend it, Speaking from experience, they'll quite happily get you into a load of debt by withholding forms that you have no idea you need to sign. And then they won't pay the debt that they are responsible for. So this makes already a horrible situation so much worse. And it puts all of the power in the hands of the abuser. It is another failing of the universal credit system that Esther McVeigh constantly preps up, constantly defends, with no reason to defend it. It quite frankly just makes life worse at every single turn. Now the second story is uh, fairly interesting and a little bit infuriating. So it came out that Esther McVeigh wants to uh, put together a committee to actually see if Tory austerity is making people suffer. Okay, on, on the surface of that, that sounds okay. Because if you were born into an incredibly wealthy family like Esther McVeigh, you do have a different perception of the world. You do, I don't want to make that many excuses considering the job role that S. McVeigh actually has, but you do tend to have a perception of everything is a lot better than what it actually is because for you it has been. So this investigation, this, this, this committee that she wants to put together isn't inherently bad. Until, of course, you look at her position, 
the fact that she is the head of the DWP, that because of her, because of her system, because of the universal, universal credit system, because of her policies, every single week I read about an elderly person who has been kicked out of their home or has committed suicide because of the pressure, because of the repulsive systems and policies that she's put in place. This week I read that an 87 year old man was evicted from his own home because of the universal credit system's mistake and the fact that his, his rent wasn't paid. 87 years old already given everything you possibly get you've given your best years to the country and yet esther mcveigh's policies has seen that you now live on the street so yes she should already know this but that's not the final kicker the final kicker and the one that really pisses me off is that this committee will cost two hundred thousand pounds you want to talk about austerity. You want to talk about people suffering. £200,000 will go a long way to helping a lot of people. But instead, she's spending it on an investigation that she could do for free just by walking through the streets of London, walking through the streets of Manchester, through Birmingham, through the smaller towns like Dover, for example, like Folkestone. There are homeless people in every single town. There are more people in this country that are struggling than are actually doing well. And it's been reported that at least half the people who are now homeless are actually in work. But because their wages are so pathetic and because inflation has surpassed them so vigorously, they can't afford to actually live in a home. So while they're working, they're still homeless. It is repugnant how frivolously this government spends money on things that they do not need to be spending money on. And at the same time, withhold money from the NHS, withhold money from education, withhold money from the police department, from the fire service. It is obscene on every single level. And now Esther McVeigh wants to spend £200,000 on something that she could walk down the street and find out for free. Last story. And this one isn't confirmed by Esther McVeigh yet, but it's something that I hope she does do. McVeigh, McVeigh has been invited to come and speak with people who actually survive on food banks. And this, I think, would be fantastic if she if she does actually do it. Now, as I said before, I don't want to make too many excuses for Esther McVeigh because you can only give someone so many passes before you actually realise they're a horrible person. But as I've said before, if you're born into wealth and privilege, then it's... It's so much harder to understand how and why people are suffering. Esther McVeigh is a multi-millionaire. Her family is a family of multi-millionaires. She's never had to work a day in her life, and yet now she's in a job where she literally controls the lives of countless people across the UK. Countless might be an exaggeration, but you get where I'm coming. Anyway, having this invite could be an eye-opener if she does actually attend. Because this is the same person who said it's absolutely right that people survive on food banks. That it's absolutely right that nurses don't get a pay increase that matches inflation. And a woman who at the same time is saying all these horrible things doesn't really pay for her own meals because while she does spend seven pounds something on a fried breakfast every Sunday 
guess what? She claims that back in expenses. Her home claims back in expenses. Second home paid for by us, just like Boris Johnson's 30 million pound home paid for by the taxpayer, not by her, not by Boris in that case. So this could be an eye opener. This could be a sharp shock into the actual suffering that her party and her policies are inflicting on the country and the grim reality that a lot of us face day in and day out. There is hope. Uh, there's not a lot of hope, but there is hope. This could potentially lead to something better. I won't hold my breath, but at this point, all we have is hope. Just quickly before I go, um, as I said uh, a few minutes ago, every week I read something horrible like an 87 year old man being evicted from their home. Homelessness has skyrocketed. It is at an appalling state. The government used to give a fair bit to charities and charities that would deal with homeless, that would do, deal with suicide prevention and things like that. But under the Tories, under the Conservatives, uh, funding towards charities like this has stopped. In the link down below is, uh, in the description box down below will be a link to Teespring. Uh, it will go to a shop that I've set up there, Telren, T-E-L-R-E-N. Uh, there's uh, there's Norse inspired shirts, there's cups, uh, there's, there's some archery bits, but every penny profit made from that will go to Porchlight, which is a fantastic charity that helps the homeless. Now I couldn't set it up so that Teespring pay directly to Porchlight. Unfortunately, it's one of the charities that they don't have uh, an option for straight to it, but. It, I am going to send every single penny to Porchlight because homelessness is getting out of hand. It is repulsive and everything is being made so much harder for people who need more help. So either go to Porchlight and donate yourself or follow the, the link down below and uh, buy a t-shirt, buy a hoodie, probably don't need a hoodie in this weather. but cups pillows and so on all the profits do go to charity it is going to porch light uh, teespring take their cut uh, almost automatically but every penny profit will go to charity it will go to help the homeless so yeah if you want to help that would be fantastic